the Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! That's right, Steve. The show has started. All right. That's, that's yeah. great. Didn't realize. Nope. Didn't no, I realize you're sitting in the studio and the music's playing. And He's like, oh, what? Are you guys just running a test? Well, <laughs> us- usually there's a bit of finagling going on. Mm. And- no, some of us uh, were here early and got set yeah. up. Oh, no. This we- I never sit here while you fuck with stuff. You're right. <laughs> no. <laughs> I never just sit here for Steve, like. Uh, Steve's going full villain today. Yeah. 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 I, I, I never villain. sit here for a long to moderate time while you fuck with stuff. <laughs> uh, totally. Yeah. No, that it's happens. You're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Wow. Mm-hmm. No, hey, how good. is. How is the general manager most on the hot seat how is he today it's a uh, friday night is game seven of the tampa bay lightning versus buffalo sabers in the second round of the nhl playoffs mm-hmm. last night we played through the trade deadline uh so i'm a little embarrassed Uh-oh. so Uh-oh. the way it works trade deadline day in ea sports nhl 22 franchise mode is there's a time limit Mm-hmm. Because you start your day, oh. you start at like, I think like 8 a.m. And then your time runs out at 2 p.m. when the trade deadline's over. And it's really self-imposed, that restriction, because you can just make trades the day before mm-hmm. on the calendar. That's true. You don't, you don't have to do it. But I like to hold firm on the game. I like to, I'm playing the game. You're big on the theatrics. Yeah, exactly. You're entertaining the people. Exactly. Okay. So trade deadline day starts. I go out. I get Truba. Okay. <laughs> Number one defenseman on our team all of a sudden. Wow. Not bad. <laughs> I'm like, hey, we need a left wing as well. I try and get Andre Burakovsky, who... What? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you well, mean what? I haven't watched every second of every stream. <laughs> yeah. What happened to, like, one of your most valuable players? <laughs> he left th- this past off season, so we thought... He cashed out? Because, because of theatrics, we're going to go get our guy who had a great playoffs last year for right. us. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. We're going to gonna go get him trade deadline day. Because I tuned in for the playoffs, and you were like, oh, Burakovsky, <laughs> we couldn't get him back. I'm like, what yeah. do you mean you couldn't get him back? Is it? Did you run out of time, or did you so, did you fall asleep on the phone like Jim Betting did with Troy Stetcher? I believe that, we were dealing with... We'll Vancouver at the time. It just funny you should bring up Jim Benning. Mm-hmm. And we offered two first round picks and Nikita Gusev, and they wouldn't give us Burakovsky. What? And we kept trying trades and we ran out of time on trade deadline day. But Nikita Gusev came up big in the first round of the playoffs because then we simmed through the first that. round of the playoffs. Nikita Gusev came up big. Thank God we didn't just throw him in in the Burakovsky trade. We win round one. We demolish the Sens uh, 4-1 in the series. Good. We go to the second round. We're up against Tampa Bay Lightning. Tampa Bay Lightning, one of the best teams in the NHL, even though we finished first in the Eastern Conference. No big deal. We're an amazing team. We go down to uh, game six. It's 3-2 us. Vassy shuts us out. Vasilevsky just standing on his head you all got series. Goalied. We got goalied real got bad. Goalied. Now we stopped it at game six. At the end of game six, we're going into game seven. Friday night. So I don't know if like I'm going to get fired or what, but this could be my last game ever on this stream. It's quite sad. Now, man, man. <laughs> that's such high stakes. Yeah, this could be our last game ever doing this Buffalo Sabres rebuild, and I'm quite sad, but let's go out and win game seven. Now, now, <laughs> the reveal for when you won game six is so good, too. You game can't. five. Was it game five? The oh, OT yeah, you're game? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the way the reveal for game five. Yeah. Oh, I'll be so sad. Yeah, me too. What I'm talking about here, by the way, with Jim Benning falling asleep, I don't believe that this is a real story, but it was a no. funny tweet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Long ball Larry at Larry King's balls. We like balls. Uh, Tell us said, about the balls. He, uh, he, uh, he's a comedian on Twitter, and he said, Troy Stetcher on the call he had with Benning this morning. We were talking about a short-term deal when he suddenly stopped talking. Then John Weisbrod picked up the phone and told me Jim had fallen asleep. That's where things kind of fell apart. <laughs> yeah. So it's a believable quote that, that went know. viral, but it's not like yeah. real. Yeah, it's not real. Unless, it's, not a thing that unless it's actually real. And then in which case it would be spectacular. It'd be great if Troy Stetcher was just like, no, it's real. <laughs> oh, man. Can you confirm or deny it, Troy? Yeah, no, that happened. That um, happened. Uh, I, I have to say um, it's been so fun to see the reaction in Jesse's stuff on uh, oh. like the franchise rebuild mode. So here's the thing, Jesse. And, and I know you can't be thinking this far ahead in the future, but let's mm-hmm. say you don't win the cup this year. Hey, th- I, I haven't planned for that outcome. That's one thing I've, I mentioned a few times on the stream. I think it's bad juju. I, didn't, I usually prepare like music and theatrics for every event that could happen on the stream, and I haven't prepared anything for if we don't win. This guy gets it. 
This guy gets it. No, win, no plan win B. Win only mentality. Yeah. yeah. He I mean, did, he does have a plan B, and the B is for Buffalo. Go Sabres. Could there be a season six? Is what I'm asking. No. Wow. I've set up the franchise mode to end at five years. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> all that work. Yeah. Undone. And all he has to do is get goalied one more time. It's not like you're playing an easy goalie. I mean, you're on the hot seat, pal. I know it's a possibility. I would, I would write up that resignation thing and just have it signed and ready. Fill Adam, in the dates. You missed a great internal struggle outwardly because you played who in the second round? Um, are playing. We're, we're facing the Tampa Bay Lightning. Who are without who? Victor Hedman missed two games in the series, but he's back for game seven. Oh. <laughs> no, he was back for game six. And uh, now he'll also be in game seven. So game six, they won. Because Jesse won discovered he was injured and went, oh, we don't cheer for injuries. Yeah. We don't. We want to <laughs> no, play them do that. Yeah. We, don't we, do that. <laughs> we don't cheer for that. That's a rule of the stream. You don't cheer for other teams' players to get injured, yeah. but you can feel good about your chances yeah. increasing. You can like what's happening. Better man than I. Yeah. <laughs> you're not happy that Kevin Durant got hurt, but you're happy the Warriors got worse. Yeah. You know, as you do. The Raptors fans weren't cheering when he when he was snapped his no. freaking arc I was, I was in the building for that Ooh. moment. And we were definitely cheering the dunk that happened at the same time and not Kevin Durant being injured. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> who who was it who dunked? Oh gosh. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, I, Ibaka? Think, I think it was. I, Ibaka. I think it was. I might have been a. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think it was a Baca, Actually, no. No, no. I, no. I think it was a guard. God, I miss him. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so um, uh, the Trevor Zegers school. Holy oh, shit! Wow. Well, and we're and for forever and ever, all men. I don't even know who scored it. Sonny Milano. There it is, Sonny Milano, which is a great name. Uh, yeah. Sonny Milano. Who? Where do like, you think his family's from? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say. Uh, I don't know, Japan. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a name. Like Mario and Luigi. Yeah. That's right. You know? <laughs> that's And they actually are. Yeah. That's so funny. Absolutely. Um, Sonny Milano. We're also, everywhere. Aren't Mario and Luigi's, their names are Luigi, Luigi, and Mario, Mario. Yes. No, no, they're Mario, Mario, and Mario, Luigi. Or no, sorry. Mario, Mario, and Luigi, Mario. Is that they're right? the Mario what? brothers. Oh, so Mario's last name. Oh, yelled really loud. Mario's last name is Mario. Yes. And Luigi's last name is Mario. Yeah, they're the Mario. Mario so he's Mario Mario. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go. So Sonny Milano, <laughs> absolute Sonny Milano Mario. Grand slam <laughs> shot. Like he, that was going set, you know, straight away center field all the way. And but what was amazing is Zegris got it up and over the net. I, I think the two of them together, I that's got to be the most shocking NHL goal. But like you've never seen two players more surprised that that went in. No, never, never. I've never seen a reaction like that in my entire life. It was amazing. It was unbelievable, and I, I can't remember who tweeted it, but it was before this goal. Trevor Zegras tries something crazy at least once every game. Mm. <laughs> this guy's like threatening to go Michigan every game. And what's great about this assist that he just threw off is it came from a fake Michigan. So now people are going to anticipate the fake, and he's going to score a Michigan. It's happening this season. We all know that, right? Yep. What month is it going to happen in? That should be a bet that I could bet on. January, perhaps December already, yep. February, March, April. This dude is must-see TV. He's a franchise changer. He's an absolute franchise changer. And, and uh, it's... I, I like the thing is is that it, it's amazing um when you see top athletes at the top of their sport doing the top thing but it's it's also even more amazing that a game we've been playing that, that has been being played professionally for what 104 years in the, like at that. least in the NHL form we're still going wow nobody tried that for 100 years it also shows how fun fact sorry. you should say that people did try this uh Datsuk did this in i don't know what year it is but the nhl instagram posted it and he does the exact same thing that zegras tries except nobody bats it in and it's so against the ducks I it's think. against the ducks oh that's crazy so it's, it's a fantastic video i can't show it on screen because we'll get pulled from youtube 
but go on the NHL's Instagram, scroll a couple posts back, but Datsuk tries what Zegras pulls off, but there's no one sitting there in front to bat it in. No. So it it doesn't go down in history as one of the greatest goals. It's on Jonas Hiller. That's why hockey players loved Pavel Datsuk. Yeah. yeah. Pavel Datsuk changed the game, like, underratedly. Players wanted to play like him. Mm-hmm. He's un- unbelievable, and he never was firmly in the discussion for best player in the NHL and probably should have been. Yeah. He didn't get the love he deserved. Do you think Zetterberg took some of that spotlight away? And Lidstrom and um, the some of the guys that, that were on that team? I mean, the Red Wings had like three all-timers on their team at all times for 25 years. So I think that probably hurt him. Yeah. Um, but he was absolutely unbelievable. But the fact that Zegers pulled it off... Well, and even... It's what what Zegers and Milano combined for here is so much more special than what even Datsuk was going for because Datsuk was, you know, that's the next frontier in the NHL, the air, (laughs) (laughs) the air. So he used the air to simply put the puck in front and hopefully have someone bat it in. Mm -hmm. Milano bats this thing out of the air. Because he's anticipating it. Mm. I was thinking, what if his stick was just above the crossbar and this whole thing got ruined? I'd I'd be so upset. I would be on here today campaigning for high stick goals to count. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not kidding. You can't have guys swinging sticks at eye level. No, well, I used to think that way, Jesse, and then I saw that goal. (laughs) And you can just, yeah, for a long time, guys, it's fine. For a long time in the NHL, you weren't allowed to pass the puck forward. To your point, Adam, about the game advancing. You couldn't you couldn't send the puck up the ice uh, intentionally. Mm-hmm. So we're going to reach a point where this is, more stuff is just going to keep happening. And I'm excited to see where hockey goes in the next, I don't know, 20 to 15 years. Because what these NHL players who are like retired always keep saying is these kids t- today, they're doing stuff that we didn't even think of the, with the puck. And yeah. They're dancing in practice. If you see kids who are like 12 just do stuff on an ice mm-hmm. rink today, it blows your mind. So you don't, I, I think too, part of the, the reason that that's happening is because the internet is so easy to share videos. Yeah. So one guy in his backyard rink who could do that crazy thing, maybe five people would have known about it in his neighborhood. Now, 50,000 people can find out about it on TikTok. A million people saw it on TikTok yeah. in an hour. I've yeah. talked about this. <laughs> like the influence of guys like Zach Bell, Pavel Barber, uh, Nasher are having on the sport. I mean, uh, Sasha Barkov was out there doing shootout moves with Barber because he's learned stuff from Barber. That's how unbelievable this guy is. And like viral stars, Ido Aguchi, it like, oh, from Japan. Yeah. Unbelievable. The internet has had such an impact and, uh, other conversation. I don't know if he's going to get voted in. The NHL has to move heaven and earth to get Trevor Zegers to the all-star game. If there's going to be an all-star game this year, he has to be there. He yeah. has to be at the all, at, at the competition. Yeah. I just want to... Listen, there should be an event where nothing has to be accomplished. It's just watching players do amazing shit. <laughs> I don't... I'd rather watch that than guys stand on a platform aiming for little nets. I was in St. Louis for that. That sucked. <laughs> that event was stupid. They're going to do it this year. It, oh, it took forever <laughs> to set up and no one could hit anything. And they bring out Brett Hall, and there's a pop, and then he can't do anything, so the pop dies. And no, that event sucks. Just have Trevor Zegers do wild shit with a GoPro on his helmet. Yeah. That is live feed to the Jumbotron. That's all I want to see. That's all I want to see. I want to see Zegers against Austin Matthews in a crazy shit competition. On American soil, two of America's finest. You know, the, the guy who's an established star versus the rookie. Right, <laughs> you know, I want to see that. I like that. I man, it's so weird to think of Austin Matthews as that, but he I know all the way is. Tell right? me about it. All the way is. I I uh, uh, the game last night was interesting. Columbus uh, has been playing well above their pay grade this year in terms of what you would think that they would have Always on do. on paper. Always do those uh, the two Austin Matthews goals, very different scoring. I'm trying to. There oh, was the yes. sec goal yes. two yeah. right before Nick Ritchie. Uh, I had to go through the Rolodex, but I had Matthew's first goal filed under Michael Bunting. So why why did you have that filed under Michael Bunting? <laughs> because that pass was disgusting, and it <laughs> was still the only legs. the second most impressive pass in the NHL last night. Yeah, seriously. And uh, so so when Matthew scores that goal, you think, wow, that's amazing. But uh, to me, the fourth goal, I think it was, because he scored before and after Richie. Fifth. Fifth goal. 
And they all became... They, Tavares got the fourth. Tavares, Tavares got the fourth. Yeah. Um, the fifth goal was so um, vintage him because you're talking about a shot that if anybody else took it, it's going off the chest. Yeah. And, or wide. Or wide. <laughs> or, you know, the goalie squeezes it between the pads. Yeah. His shot is so sneaky. It throws the timing of goalies that are taking it, right? Mm-hmm. He, it's like he knows, what, he knows when to pick up the speed on it and he knows when to actually slow it down. And it, that goal, to me, was like, that goalie saw him, squared up, and it still went through. I looked at it, and I was like, that's a bad goal. You think that's a bad goal? Yeah, the oh, goal no. is, that's, I think that's an Austin Matthews shot goal all the way. That is, it's because of Austin Matthews shot. That I don't but know. How, how many bad goals has Alex Ovechkin scored in his career? You know what Zero. I mean? Zero. I don't think that's a bad goal. What? Why can't it just be a snipe? That's what I think it is. It, I don't know. What? It's a okay, laser. It bounces off of the goalie. Yeah, like, and yeah. he almost stopped it. But <laughs> because he, it's a bad goal. But he didn't. No, but like, okay, it's Austin Matthews one-on-one with yeah. a goalie. Yeah, if sure. you're a goalie, is there a worse position to be in in the National Hockey League? There's not many more. No, no. There's maybe five. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a great time. It's not a great time. He's got like 50 goals in his last five games. How dare you? How do both of you? <laughs> <laughs> I, just watched I think that's a great. Again. I thought it was a great goal. It's oh, nice. Adam spilled. Oh no! Adam oh. spilled. Oh. And it's going on the board. Oh, did you saved get it? In time? Saved it. Saved oh, it. Oh yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Hooray! Yeah. Anyways, I look at that. I'm like, goalie should have had that. But I, I think the reason he didn't have it is because it's because Austin, of Austin Matthews. freaking Matthews, man. That's, that's why nice. I know everybody's talking about that. The, the first goal he scored. To me, the second one, I'm like, that does. If that's Pierre Engvall, that's not going in. Why was I <laughs> reaching for the exact same name? <laughs> well, because well, just... Pierre, he fails on every single break he has. <laughs> no. I mean, no, no, no. He got the eighth goal against um, oh. Colorado the other day. Yo, he's oh. the, right now, and listen, Engvall's got the talent to be better than he is. Mm-hmm. But Engvall <laughs> is squarely in the guy category. Oh, I, well, I figured this out. Okay. I figured this out because I was like, why, why can't I get on board with this whole Pierre Engvall thing? Mm-hmm. And then I went on Puckpedia because for some reason I had this curiosity. Who are Claude Lemieux's clients? Well. Uh, and Pierre Engvall is one of them. And I'm I was sure like, his, I knew it. His son is the other. I knew it. His son is the, no, he's got a few. He's, he's got a few, but Engvall is certainly one of them. Why is that important? I don't like Claude Lemieux. Oh, because of Brendan? No, because of Claude. Okay. And Brendan. And Chris Draper. Claude made Brendan and Chris Draper, <laughs> and especially Bart. I don't, <laughs> I don't like him. <laughs> no, Engvall can stay. He's a leaf. That's fine. Yeah. No, I, listen. <laughs> I, and it's not a disappear Engvall, but there's a difference between the shots, right? Yes. Like what Frankie Corrado sure. said when he was on, he's like, well, this guy can sling the pill. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, love when he said that. <laughs> He's uh, he's just talking like a normal guy. Oh, hockey player. Yeah, yeah hockey player. Hundred percent. Right. But he's right, right? Like, there's just a difference to that. I I do think, man. Uh, I I didn't get to watch the, much of the third period because I had to go to bed. Oh, good. And it's so funny waking up and going, oh, of course it was five four. You no, know, well, that's the fourth very... one came with a uh, half a second to go. Yeah. yeah, but I just you still like you look at that score mm-hmm. and you think like if you didn't know that that was again this is my initial thoughts. I wake up, I get the. The sports net notification that right. it was five four, the Leafs win. I'm like, of course they came back a little. Of course they did. Yeah. But it was it was a good victory in the sense that that's probably a game where Columbus climbs back in and they win in past years. You know? Oh that's, boy, is that the bar? Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I think that's the bar for this team that's now in first place. I was with it because Columbus scores in the first thirty seconds of the third, and mm-hmm. I go, uh oh. Um, but then they held the fort until three and a half minutes to go. And then you're like, oh, now that now they're down two. Mm-hmm. Columbus pulls uh, the goalie with uh, three minutes to go. And I'm like, oh, shit. Mm. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Here we go. And honestly, if it ends 5-3, I think we all look at the game a little differently. But just that goal with half a second to go. And like TJ Brody's body language was so shattered for a guy who literally just close the game out like yeah don't, don't worry about it but the standard is higher yeah the standard's higher this year sheldon keith had nothing but bad things to say about that performance really yeah the first period was great though so it sure was where was it the rest of it and then it went away you know mm. toronto's 11 three and one at home this year god that's disgusting. a good value for your buck if you're paying to go to the game you see the matthew stat 
In, yeah. his, in his last, I think it was 83 home games. It was either games or home games. Yes, I did. Has, it, is, it was home games. Home ga- yeah. Guess how many goals he has. 70-something. 80, 80, 83. 72. <laughs> He's a mutant. He's a mutant. It's ridiculous. Yeah. He lives in the sewer and eats pizza and has a rat as a mentor. He's a mutant. He's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle is what I'm trying to say. That's it's crazy. It's stupid. It's crazy. So I think there's a lot of positives in the last month and a half from this Leafs team. And good, you can't point to really any bad losses. No. Because that's, that's something we always look at with the Leafs. Is, I mean, Winnipeg, Winnipeg, where's, Winnipeg, Winnipeg. where's Winnipeg. their crushing defeat? The Winnipeg game, I don't think it's a nah. bad loss. Uh, nah. It's, I mean, it's a goalie in his fourth game. It wasn't a great loss. They competed. They came yeah. back in a game when they were down, what was it, 4-1, 3-1? Yeah. It was 5. I think it was 5-1. And they made it a game. Yeah. We the also Leafs have been on a roll. We did also did need... you see how the Leafs almost blew a five-one lead and had the decency to not gloat about it? Um, <laughs> you know what I mean. The other, the other thing is, is the reaction. Yeah, we didn't fuck that up. Yeah, good for you. Feels I think... good to beat Columbus, hey eh, guys. Yeah, what's better than beating Columbus? I don't know a lot of things, like Jesus Christ. Anyway, my yeah. thinking is the the last thing I want to say is I love the reaction every th- every time something goes right for Nick Ritchie. Oh, the players on the team good. certainly love him, and he finally scores. But I also think he has been good. He's got, I think it's six points in his last eight games, which I realize are not world beater numbers, but they're perfectly fine. They're perfectly good, Nick Ritchie numbers. Yes. So, so then here's the thing, you know, the the, the famous thing on the Amazon, uh, the Amazon documentary, the All or Nothing, um. Uh, you know, the conversation with Jimmy VC. What do you right. do here? What you you got to find a role. You got to find something. You're very vanilla. Vi- yeah. So Richie had a bit of that at the start of the year. Yes. And people were really on him. Oh, yeah. So what is his thing? If you're Sheldon Keefe, what are you using Nick Richie for? Well, the difference between Richie and VC is when Richie was struggling, um, like what, what are we at? Game 27 now? Mm-hmm. So for games, I guess, one to seven, he was in the top six, didn't do anything. And then from about game eight to game 20, he's like, could always be an asshole. I guess I'll be an asshole. And so he was an asshole. And he dug and he hit and he face washed. And, you know, sometimes it went awry and he took a dumb penalty. That, I think, was the darkest point of his season. When he had already been taken out of his role or was on the verge of being taken out of his role. And then he took really dumb penalties in back-to-back games. Mm -hmm. But... He found out how to be an asshole intelligently. He got put onto the third line, which is something that I never wanted to see. I didn't think he would succeed in that role at all. But what I didn't realize is because Andre and Kasha, or to Andre and Kasha, <laughs> Kasha Keefs? and Kampf are, yeah, the Keefs. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple days on Twitter.com. Uh, Kasha and Kampf are like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. They're best of friends. I didn't realize that Kasha and Richie were line mates in Anaheim. Oh. And had chemistry. And yeah, why wouldn't that work? Under the right circumstances, if he understands his role, that should work. And last night, he identified a situation that both of them are behind the goal line. I don't need to be there. So why don't I go in front? And oh, look, no one's here. And he buries it. I, and while, when he was in fourth liner purgatory, he was a perfectly fine fourth liner. The fourth line produced mm-hmm. when he was on it. So is that a great use of 2.5 million bucks? I don't know. Is the team better with Nick Ritchie playing at his best? Yes. The fifth highest paid forward on the team. Wow. No way. Yeah. List them here. Oh. No. Six. <laughs> Matthews, Marner. Tavares. Tavares. Nylander. Kerfoot. Six. Richie. Oh, yeah. So he's six. 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 My bad. Damn. But I was like, Kasha? No. McKay? No. No. Sp- no. S- no. And no. Oh, my God. Sixth highest paying forward. That's still pretty high. Pretty high. <laughs> it's pretty high. It's yeah, pretty but- high for a guy who just didn't get qualified by the Bruins. I think, I think it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. He's, well, I think we'll be glad to have him come the spring but that's a long way away I so think, but he I needs mean, to find a way to be useful until then and he has it seems like he's done that right yeah. and it's just nice it was it was cool to see the reaction that the the Leafs themselves had I always think that that's important right you look at when somebody scores like when Wayne Simmons scored his first goal in Toronto like and that was you know last year during with COVID or whatever um there was like a legitimate celebration on the bench and I think it was oh yeah Matthews seemed to be the most jacked about it yeah and like that's cool right because that's 
That it's like that's like that's my guy. Did I'm excited for my guy. Game? I don't remember. I don't remember. I know he fought Sherat. Yeah. There was a lot of Wayne Simmons stock. Mm-hmm. And that was a fan base. We talked about him from basically day one of the ep- uh, of the podcast. And now he's a leaf. Yeah. Hey! Yeah, it's cool. Um, uh, so obviously before the game, it was announced that Jason Spezza would be given a six game suspension. We also know no, that mid game. I think it was during, oh, it was yeah, it was it was uh, yeah. during the second period oh, intermission. Fuck. Dreger breaks in with that news. Uh, Neil Pionk was given uh, two games. And of course, uh, you have Wayne Simmons getting fined 2250 I believe. Yeah. Well, that's um, the salary that he loses by being suspended. Mm-hmm. That long. Um, but yeah, no, Pionk's going to lose 50 grand for missing two games. That's a lot. Wow. Yo, you ask why the, sp- why the fines aren't higher? It's because when they get suspended, it's onerous. That's a lot of money. Now, Spezza... But that's, what the, like, that's why they don't suspend guys. Oh. It, like, which, so, I don't know. To me, there's a chicken and egg thing going on there. Okay, to explain. Well, they're afraid to suspend guys because guys make a lot of money. And, oh my God, I'm going to get... Uh, you know, I'm going to have to serve a game and also lose $50,000. Don't be a five. moron on the yeah, ice. Don't get suspended. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, you get, you're losing that much money because you make a lot of money. What, Tom Wilson has lost millions of dollars. <laughs> Literally yeah. millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. He dollars. actually, what was that first suspension he had after the big deal was signed? Uh, I can't. It was like 15 games or something. Yeah, it was big. Well, it was a yeah. big suspension. It was 21, and he got it reduced to 14. All right. Oh my God! Yes. Yeah. And we were like, "Wait a second, <laughs> that's what? a big reduction." Let's take what a happened? week off. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and he's been suspended at least once since, and it wasn't as big. And yeah. and this is big. This is Pionk's big um, cash in contract, right? He's making 5.875. Um, well, he like that trade. To looks Winnipeg. pretty damn good. Right it now. looked horrible. It looked horrible now. And then, then he shows up and he just does nothing but score points. Man, yeah. Good, good for him. Good pick. Good yeah. pickup. But I, I'm thinking here, like, um, yeah, he doesn't have any bonuses. So he, he's paying full out of pocket. And it, not that, you know, 50 grand's nothing to sneeze at for most people. For him, I'm, it's survivable. You know, he signed a $23 million contract. He'll be fine. But it's still one of those things where you go, fuck. And it is kind of funny that he's losing. More than twice as much money as Jason Spezza, who got a suspension that's three times as long. Right. I wonder if that's part of the reason the suspension's so long. Because he doesn't have any salary to retract. I, I think the reason it's so long is because he did something legitimately dangerous. <laughs> well, yeah. that too. Like, like and, and listen, I know there's a lot of Leaf fans that aren't going to like me for this, but six games is warranted. That is a dangerous. I think a lot of people agree with you. That's yeah. a dangerous play, well. and I love Spets. I I yeah. love him. I think he's amazing. He's a great leader. He's a heart and soul guy, and he's the guy you know fighting Columbus in the playoffs two years ago, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and then you know playing fucking lights out against Montreal in the playoffs last year. Leader, 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 and honestly, and Sens fans are gonna hate this. Toronto Maple Leaf to the core. Oh, it's so good. He is such a fucking leaf. It's they unbelievable. Know. He, I look at Spezza and I say, that's a Dallas star. <laughs> that well, man is Texas. See, to I me, just sort of pretend that never happened. <laughs> to me, Mike Sorry, Medano Dallas, is like, a Dallas star. No, that's, that's, Jason Spezza. Yeah. You know, no. um, uh, I, you know, to me, Spezza is what every Torontonian wants the Leafs to be. A little bit of score, a little bit of fuck you. Makes no and money. And sometimes a little bit of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no money. Yeah, we love that for some reason. Hall of Famer, no money. Yo, <laughs> let's cheer for the billionaires, but not the millionaires. <laughs> no, um, I agree. So, so with Spets, and I know Steve, you're you, you've got some stuff to say about this. I do, I do think, you know, I saw that and I was like, yeah, fair enough. And not not that I love it, not that I think necessarily that um that it's fair in comparison to other things. However, for those of you saying, uh, well, uh, uh Lemieux, Brendan Lemieux got less for biting a guy. Like, let just just take a step back for a second and think about that. Think about what you're saying. There is I, yeah. a hit to the head at over 20 kilometers an hour with a plastic knee pad yeah. and a knee behind it yeah. that is finely tuned hockey player muscle mass for 20 years. And then there's a bite. What a way of... You have such a way with words. Do Who I, are these people that are arguing? Oh, this? there are. <laughs> Who are we there are, there arguing are. And, and listen, I, I, I just want to say, for those of you <laughs> remaining on the side, that this is not... Don't make that comparison because you're not you're not going to win. The, it's, uh, listen, a bite's bad. A bite is a bite is shocking. That's the problem. Oh, it's, do, yeah. You saw Brady Kachuk's like Brady Kachuk's indignation afterward was literally who the fuck 
does that? He would have been so much less indignant if he had gotten a slash that like broke his wrist. Yes. Because like that's yes. run of the mill. Who bites? It's Austin Powers. Who throws a shoe? Honestly. And the answer is no, no. No, no, through some shit. But, but who bites? Who bites multiple times? And also, part of the resistance to all that is the NHL. The the video is it's performance art, Adam. It's it's the dumbest thing ever. John Boy, oh. who's who we've brought up several times. So good. He did a breakdown. J O M B O I. It's on Twitter. I think it's on YouTube too. Of uh, the Brady Kachuk, Brendan Lemieux bite. And you know how the NHL was like, yeah, we couldn't find the bite on the right hand. John Boy's like, here it is. And he just <laughs> points to it. Why? He should Anyway, he should have been suspended more. Most players should be suspended more. And this is the conundrum here. Because Spetz's suspension is just about right. If that's going to be the standard going forward, which we know flatly it won't be. So I don't blame fans for being like, that's a bad thing. He deserves it, but also fuck the suspension. And both are true. Yeah. Both are true. Sure. I, I think what the problem is, is the NHL delegitimizes its suspensions by not having specific guidelines. The problem is that we know every si they look at every single case differently, which means that they look at every single case based on how they woke up that morning. If you have <laughs> no guidelines, like if you had a bad sleep and you're feeling extra grumpy, you suspend a guy that's never been suspended for more games. Well, and that's and, and and listen, Spezza deserves every minute. Yes, but <laughs> that is always a factor. It's always, always, always a factor in every suspension, except this one. Just mm, mm, middle finger to this one. Why? It's Why not is it supposed, always a factor. It's not supposed to be a factor. When you're suspending, but it always back. has been. Yeah, and they, so they why look at it if it's within it the last eighteen months? They do, yeah. If it's within the last eighteen months, but outside of that, it's not a factor of who the guy is. It's oh, the, they, I can't remember. It's who the it isolated was. incident. Yeah, because the Tom. Remember when they were when Tom Wilson yeah. was suspended. We're like, ah, this guy's suspended spending a million times. We're like, doesn't matter. NHL won't look at that. Yeah. No, no. So, but and and so and actually, it's interesting. So on Agent Provocateur this week, we actually I, I got a I got a Q and A with Alan in, and Jesse records all these, so he heard it too. Mm -hmm. And, and Alan, I, I listen. As oh, well. yeah, <laughs> listen. This was a great episode. So Alan walks you through. I feel like I say that every week, but it was. Oh, it was a fun one. It was yeah. so fun to get personal. And Alan has some amazing. One of the things about Alan is a great storyteller. But he talks, he walks you through what a Department of Player Safety hearing is like. And it's a little bit, it's, um, you know, there's no minutes taken. You could speak openly and that sort of thing. I would be, lo I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for what Spezza would have said about the hit on Pionk. Would love to know, because the agents are always there too. Of course. Would love to know what he said. I would love to know what the NHL says. And I know he's going to appeal this. Um, or that's the understanding I have this morning, is that there's going to be an appeal. He's got a I good case. That. He's got a good case. So I, uh, apparently his argument in the meeting was that um, it wasn't, he, when he was going for the hit, it wasn't so much a, a dangerous hit at the time. It only became dangerous once um, he fell. He right. was eligible. Yeah. Pionk was eligible to be hit that almost the, the whole time. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that's what Dreger said on the broadcast. Luke Fox, by the way, is confirming that the uh, that Spezza will appeal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, that that's a fair argument that he was he was a def uh, defender who was eligible to be hit. It's like um, committing a crime you didn't mean to while committing another crime. Mm -hmm. So like he was it to me from the replay. It looks like he's clearly going for a shoulder hit. But things change. He doesn't adjust, and he knees a guy right in the head. Now he didn't mean to knee him right in the head, but he was going for a ridiculous retaliatory hit. Anyway, so they yeah, yeah. My yeah. problem with the the hit is you yelled before when you're on the bench yeah. when the uh, Sandine hit happened, the knee on knee, and then you came off the bench to go enact violence on somebody, not to play hockey. Yeah. You left the bench to go. Do something violent and not play hockey. That's the problem. That's why you're suspended. So this all goes back to the original point, which is the problem with the, the, the Department of Player Safety. What did Alan call it? The De Department of Player Suspensions. Um, <laughs> Love it. Uh, the, re Love the, it. the issue, again, you got to listen to that show. It's crazy. <laughs> By the way, if you ever wanted to, if you ever consider what it would be like to be a sports agent, he gets into that. Uh, like what, he talks about all of that. It's crazy. Um, but, but I, uh, Long story it's, short, it's so I think the problem is that every suspension is questioned on a level that it doesn't need to be because the credibility of each suspension 
whether you believe they're deserved or not, is still under question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the basic guideline? How do you come to six games? How do you come to three games? How do you come to 21 games and then reduce it to 14 games? What, how does that all work? And what, what are these? Because you got to base it on something. So you have to believe that somewhere the NHL and George Peros, George Peros, who I believe is a degree at Harvard, mm -hmm. um, has this written down. But they're smart enough in their own minds to not put that out to the public so they can't be held to account. This is the problem. We can't, usually what we're used to because we live in law, lawful societies is the law is written down somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you break the law, there are expected punishments. Right. The NHL has, I don't know what the punishments are, and I'm not even really sure this is bad. Uh, I'll just wait to see if I got a call. Like, Am I going to get an in-person or a phone call? Even a speeding ticket is not arbitrary. Like, no. Some of you right now are like, well, I've had a speeding ticket reduced. Yeah, but what they do is they reduce the speed. The cop literally pretends you weren't going as fast as you were. They reduce it to something where you don't get demerit points deducted. Like, so it's still fixed. Mm -hmm. If you're going between this and this, it's this. If you're going between this and this, it's this and points, etc. Like, I, you, you know what was funny to me? So Mark Shifley got suspended last playoffs for his hit on an empty net play. Mm -hmm. Third uh, dirty incident on an empty net with the Jets over the last year. But that suspension bled into the regular season. The most arbitrary suspension I think we've ever seen. I don't remember if it was 2018 or 2019. When they suspended Nazem Kadri, just, just the rest of the series. Mm -hmm. That suspension could have been three games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, mm -hmm. no, it's just the rest of the series. You're done for the series. So wait, if we win, I can just show up game one mm -hmm. next series? Yeah. And here's... Why? I don't know. Did you see the highlights from the, the Canes-Jets uh, game last night? Yeah, it's a bad knee. Ian Cole... That's a bad knee. Like, almost takes Mark Shifley's leg off. Yeah, and got a penalty. And a, and a game misconduct. And so did anything happen after that? No. Yeah. Good. That's how it should go. And we're talking pre spetsa here. And Pion the, should not have played another minute in that game. The official... Uh, who called the penalty on Ian Cole was an official in the Leafs Jets game the other day. It wasn't Brad oh, Meyer. I well, don't that's remember nice. Who it was? Super nice. I'm glad he got it. Mm. So I haven't seen the Ian Cole. I applaud hit, growth. But if you it's remember, bad. Ian Cole is the, also the one who took out uh, Kuznetsov when him and Tom Wilson had that huge fight mm -hmm. like two years ago, and it was the I anniversary that. of that that fight. Was it a knee that Ian Cole did? Yeah, uh, I believe it was a knee on knee on Koozie. So I, I haven't seen this play, but was it a knee on knee as well, Adam? I don't know. The oh, uh, Koozie one? Last no, night? no, the Ian Cole one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I haven't oh, seen it. Oh my god, and it's bad. It's, like when you watch it, it's shocking. Okay, and it's 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 more blatant than the Peon like, Sandine one easily. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd like say it's just so. it's a cleaner knee <laughs> if if there's a way to put it that way. It's stuck out way farther from the player's body. It's so, not good. It's, so, very, it's, it's bad. Again, I'm never going to argue that Spezza deserves a minute less of his suspension. What I am going to say is that I think it's a little bit frustrating that every single suspension is, is you know, qu extremely questionable because they just won't say, here are the guidelines by which we work in. That's all they need to do. That's all they need to do. Anyway. Well, it seems like the only one they have worked out is kneeing. It's two games. So Ian Cole's going to get two games. But what's we all seem to agree that it's worse, though. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Ian Cole should get more than two games. Yes. In my opinion. Yes. Question, unquestionable. But anyway, we'll see what happens. These days, it can be hard to find the right candidates for your small business. And that's why LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to find the people that you want to talk to. And it's faster. And here's the thing. It's free, baby. So you create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond on the world's largest professional network of over 770 million people. I'm even on it. You can add me. That's right, me. I'm wearing a purple shirt. Seriously, look it up. Focus on candidates with the right skill and experience and use the screening questions to get your role filled with the most qualified people because you want to make the hire once, not multiple different times. Then... You use simple tools like LinkedIn Jobs to quickly filter and prioritize who you want to interview and hire. 
It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus its leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find candidates worth interviewing faster. And did you know that every single week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NHL show. That's linkedin.com slash NHL show to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Listen, let's talk about internet, internet privacy for, for a minute. We're all a little worried, right? We know our information is being shared in places we perhaps don't want it shared. We don't know how much. We don't know who it's going to. We don't know who's looking at it. And that's why if you want to fight back against control of the internet, use ExpressVPN. If you've ever wondered how free to access giants get all their money, well, it's by tracking your searches, your video history, and everything you click on. But you knew that, right? They're building a profile on you, and then they're going to sell it off. So when you use ExpressVPN on the app, on your computer or your phone, you anonymize how much of your online presence is hiding your IP address. That makes activity more difficult to trace and sell to advertisers. And what's more, ExpressVPN encrypts 100% of the network data that you put out there and protects you against eavesdroppers and cyber criminals. And what you'll like the most about this is it's going to take one click to protect all your devices. That's why ExpressVPN is rated number one by Business Insider. So let's stop allowing tech companies to just take your information and sell it to random people. This is your privacy. You should secure it. Go to expressvpn.com slash STP. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash STP to get three extra months free with this exclusive link. Again, it's expressvpn.com slash SDP to learn more. Ho, 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 everyone. Let me ask you a question. You don't have to answer, but it's a serious question. Let's talk about the down there region. Is it clean? Do you feel like you're prepared? with the right tools to keep it clean? Do you have access to the Performance Package 4.0? Because listen, if you go to manscaped.com right now and use that code DANGLE, 20% off and free shipping right now. Also, you should take advantage of this. This is really cool. The just launched Ultra Premium Body Wash and a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. Do I need to do this to my hair once? Yes. Twice? No. It's taken care of. Done. Easy. And here's the thing about the Performance Package 4.0. It includes this, and this is important, the Crop Preserver, the Crop Reviver, which is the anti-chafing ball deodorant, moisturizer, and toner. They're all in there. It's time to keep your North Pole feeling and smelling fresh. You'd be crazy not to take advantage of the 20% off and free shipping afforded to you by using the promo code DANGLE at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE at manscaped.com. 20% off, free shipping, manscaped.com. Use that promo code DANGLE. Clean up your nuts and make Santa proud this year. Balls. Um, so uh, I want to ask you about this, and I'm just going to pull it up. Did you guys see... Mm -mm. This is odd. Did I see Agent Provocateur? No, <laughs> did you see that? You should watch that. Um, no, this is really odd because... First off, let me just say, start by saying being a team social media account runner cannot be easy. And especially because, um, oh. especially because oh, no. if you have a team voice, like the Leafs are just robotic. It's three, two Leafs. Here's a, yeah, we, uh, you love to see it. <laughs> That's what they tweeted last night. I was like, whoa, personality. And the reason they do that is because they know every tweet that they send out is going to be scrutinized, right? Wayne Train. Yeah. Poppy. <laughs> Really styles. <laughs> like it's super grandma yeah. glass of water boring. <laughs> but but water is good for you. But like you remember when Vegas launched their Twitter account, that guy, the guy that ran it at the time, like stepped out of line a few times. Wasn't there didn't he question uh whether or not the local reporters were fans? Like a Nashville reporter. Oh. And and we and, and then he said, Well, who was the guy that he questioned? It was a Nashville the reporter. Diamond. Di <laughs> the, the, the diamond. The <laughs> diamond. Um, and he said he's oh, you know, Jim Diamond. Jim Diamond. Diamond. And he had a backhand, and it'll get Jim you. Jim the Diamond back, Diamond. Yes, yeah. yes. He'll snake you. <laughs> no, he'll get you. He'll, he'll get, get you. you. Yeah. The Diamond back is he'll get you. It's an old yeah. bit that we did, but it's it's you know th that that guy was like bananas, and they've toned it down a little bit. But Vegas still has a voice. L.A. has a voice. Nashville has a voice. And this is where. It gets a little odd. I want to read you a, a, a tweet between the Nashville Predators account. By the way, it's been up since 8.20 what is, last what night. What is happening? Well, I'll have a listen. <laughs> oh, you, you didn't see No, this? no. Oh, well, sorry. let me... Let me okay. there. There's there. a reason I said all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Nolan Bianchi, who is a uh, writer for the Detroit Free Press, wrote, 
Uh, it's got to suck for your city's name to rhyme with Trashville at Preds NHL. Which is a... Which is... <laughs> like, I, if I was 12, I would find that really funny. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, like, the other it's not day, a great tweet. The other day I tweeted that Austin Matthews could beat up you and your dad. And... That was a I, bad tweet. I thought for sure everyone would interpret it as intentionally absurd and right. immature. Because I'm talking about a professional athlete beating up your dad. I don't know your dad. I don't care about him either. And people are so, like tweeting you pictures of their dad going, no, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally, here he is. And so a grown man tweeting Trashville. Trashville. I read that as someone intentionally tweeting like a 12-year-old. Yes. Not someone who's just an immature idiot. And that was my point is it's not a great tweet. It's not some sort of, oh, you body bagged him like it was It's just... a throwaway. Yes. Yes. It's... Your your tweet, though, you expected the internet to react reasonably to your tweet, and which they... is why it's a bad tweet. Yeah. Really? That never it... happened. Honestly, you should stick to the Discord. <laughs> uh, yeah. Stick to the Discord. Twitter is too dangerous right now. It's too, it's, it's too, it's, it's hostile. Why am I going to let the miserables win? Uh, no, fair. I'm that's about fair. fun. Okay, and I'm trying be, to have fun. I would rather be on our Discord. I'll just be straight oh, up. No, no. Oh, no. I'll have fun on the Discord and wherever the fuck I want, actually. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, and I'm not talking to you. I'm talking Girl. about the miserables. Okay. What their baseline and forever is miserable. I, I'll have ups and downs at various For least. sure. For yeah. sure. Well, by the way, you should join the at Discord, sdpn.ca. Click the link. Please do. And it. you know what? It's a really great conversation. No racism, no homophobia, no transphobia, none of that shit. And if you do, no we'll sexism. Kick you the fuck out. Yeah. If you it's do, your van. Bye. See you later. It's awful. We still have to say those. Yeah. Things. But you know, yeah. that's the whole thing. We wanted yep. to create, uh, we had a meeting with our mods who are amazing, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'll get back to this story in a second. I do want to shout them out. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely fucking incredible people. There are people from all over the world, mm -hmm. people from one, Southern California, New Zealand, uh, 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 we Germany. Had a Kiwi, yeah. Yeah. Like it, New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, 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 what was it? Germany. Uh, who else? Like it's everywhere. Here. Here. A lot from here. And I just want to say. So it's basically modded around the clock. 100%. Yeah, that was the, that's Robert and uh, Yams and Lucy who designed, who got all the mods together. They specifically designed it that way. They had to get uh, mods from overseas so that when the East Coasters or this, this side of asleep. the planet are asleep, there are people on the other side working the Discord. And they're it's working awesome. it. Yeah. They're working it. it. And they're just doing an amazing job. So if, if that is you, thank you so much. I, I So it's nice to meet everybody. I hadn't met everybody yet. And they're so sweet and kind and whatever. And I just, I compare that. And I told them on the meeting, I'm like, the thing that makes this special is that I can go on and have a, an actual conversation and the threads are on the side about what I want to talk about. If I feel like talking about history that day, I can go to the Adams History Corner one. If I feel like talking about F1, all the people in the F1 right now are talking about the F1 uh, Drivers' Championship online because EA has launched their own online league now. And the, the competition is absolutely amazing. Uh, and, and I've been watching all the highlights and stuff like that. So I'm going on and I'm watching and, and keeping track of it. And it's very cool. Um, I'm but always I, on the Red Dead Discord. There you go. I finally got my three-star beaver pelt at Owen Gila. <laughs> Apparently, I needed a varmint rifle. I thought I could do it with an arrow. I couldn't. Anyway, what? We have a safe space. You don't want to hear about the beavers at Owen Gila? Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. a good space. Now, Twitter, not so good. So yeah. Nolan Bianchi tweets this. Clearly, it's a joke. Clearly, it's meant to be written. Okay, read like the tweet again. Okay. It's got to suck for your city's name to rhyme with Trashville at Preds NHL. So you know and instantly. And he adds the account. Yeah. Like, he added them. Right? That's funny. So then Nashville. It is funny. Nashville's account responds. Oh, Jesse, why did you expect the internet to and just uh, to call it? <laughs> no, what it was. I'm about, oh, to, I'm you about them to be reasonable. I'm about to be right. Because the reaction from the internet oh. was a bunch of garbage. You're the right. reaction from the Preds That's fair. account is shocking. And it's still there. Oh. Yeah. I just know someone that lives in Detroit didn't say something. So, so I, that's a bit personal. Yeah. Right? Like, like Detroit did, yes, they, within the last, you know, 15 years, did declare bankruptcy, which was a first for a North American city. But also, have you heard of the new Detroit? They're turning it around. It looks amazing down there. But just why? It's just so why personal. Why shit on a whole city like that? <laughs> why don't you just say, yeah, well, you rhyme with dead wings. Something like that. Anything. Which would be... Which would match the energy of the initial tweet. No, yeah. All, he also had nothing to do with the team. He doesn't play for the Red Wings. He, I assume he, is he a reporter? He's for, a reporter for the free press. For the press. Red Wings? But, uh, for the free press? Like, 
He had not, they had nothing to do with the city of Detroit. And the, he's having fun. Okay. Why dump on the city? <laughs> they, the Nashville Predators did not literally say this, but the way I and I think a lot of people interpreted it is, yeah, well, the place you're from is poor. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I read it. Oh man! Which, so, <laughs> as someone who lives in Oshawa, all Oshawa jokes are just people from Oshawa are poor, yeah. and it's like, okay, man, this is actually kind of dark. No, I, I don't think it was that. It was that there <laughs> that they is it it's is true. it poor? Yeah, is oh, that that's what it was? So Oshawa. What, okay, what do you mean by that? I always thought there it was, are that's parts a- of Oshawa that are a bit dilapidated, so people make fun of that. We are in Toronto right now. <laughs> what? I didn't say there aren't also parts of Toronto just like that. Yes, I'm saying you did. what people more like trash Ronto. <laughs> now you're twittering me. <laughs> I know somebody I... from Toronto didn't write this. No, here, let me <laughs> let me take this very literally. What do you mean by that? <laughs> hmm? What do you mean by that? Yeah. You Explain said, your joke. That makes it funnier. You said a thing <laughs> that you doesn't that? align with my life experience. Yeah. I'm upset. Yeah. You think Stop Matthews so close? No, to you me. think Matthews can beat up my dad? <laughs> <laughs> Individually, he might be able yeah. to take me uh, and my dad. He can't take us I'm both at the same him. time. He I'm can't take him. us both at the same time. All right, God, you have such a big head. That hurts. Oh. Um. So, so I want to read. I want you to read this too. So the Nashville Predators have left this up. The Detroit Red Wings tweeted, "Win or lose, we love this city." The Detroit Pistons said, "Win or lose, it's everybody. Detroit versus everybody. Pistons, Red Wings, one pride. Detroit roots. Detroit Lions. Wow, no friends in the industry. Hashtag Let's Go Red Wings." And Detroit Tigers, good morning to everyone except the city of Nashville and its hockey team. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, to, the, to the, the city of Nashville because poor. Yeah. <laughs> I just, That's how I read it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, it was one of those where it just seemed extremely personal. And again, I want to acknowledge that the job's not easy, but doesn't that seem like a bit of an extreme reach? Yeah. Just once again, Nolan Bianchi has nothing to do with the Red Wings. He used to be on the Locked On Red Wings podcast. He doesn't even do that anymore. Oh. He's just a writer for the Detroit News. Like, come on. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> like, He's what? moving up in the world. Who, who's running that account and why do they still have the password to the Twitter account? Like, take that away from them. <laughs> I think do, the, like, the weird thing is that they didn't not- delete it. It's yeah. still yeah. there. Oh, make God. a joke about them not making the playoffs in forever or something. Yeah. yeah. And then they can come back and be like, oh, well. Nice you- arena. Too bad it hasn't seen a playoff game. Yeah. yeah or oh, just, hey. Don't hey. respond. No, no, no. Don't respond to just some random dude <laughs> making a joke. Why is the official <laughs> Nashville Predators account scrolling through the mentions? It's just a dude who's running the account on his phone, and he's scrolling through the mentions. He's like, let me go make some internet cool. jokes. Don't do that. They're dangerously close to ratio. As well, they're yeah. they they're dangerously close. Almost as many quote tweets as likes. Oh, it's catching up. Yeah. we're watching this in real time. <laughs> uh, Robert Malloy, our our community manager, actually tweeted, "Why is this still up six minutes ago?" <laughs> he doesn't know we're talking about this today. Eight sixteen to nine oh one. Okay, we'll keep an update. We'll we'll keep an eye on that ratio. Watch. Get out of here. Um, with that the Nashville Predators. So well, yeah, like take away the password from that person. Well, yeah, well, yeah. you're bad at your job. It's well. No, you're bad at your no, job. Your bad. job is social media. Your job is to tweet. Okay. I did it for a year for Tim and Sid. I know what I'm talking about, and you're bad at it it's if you're not, running the account right now. You're still doing it, by the way. You do it for us. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a joke that <laughs> it's not like your average flop joke. Like it flopped. You know what I mean? It's it's it does not match the energy at all. No. It's, yeah. That's that's it's funny we had the discussion about Mm-hmm. not having clear guidelines for uh suspensions like why that is a bad tweet is difficult to quantify but we all get why it's bad does I, that I make think sense well yeah because you're, you're basically saying ah i know somebody from a shitty city like yours didn't just diss my sweet city and by the way detroit went through a really tough time but it's a very cool place a lot of young people a lot of opportunity and hey it's affordable Nashville is an amazing city as well. Maybe a little bit further along in the development and wealth curve right now. But maybe we can relax a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we can come up with something better than just your city. Stuff. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Dead and, wings or, hey, you, you know, your, your arena is really nice. Too bad I hasn't seen the playoffs yet. Done. And you know who has to deal with this shit all the time? Buffalo. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> People just go, yeah, well, Buffalo sucks. Yeah. What? What? I don't actually. I really like Buffalo. And I actually, I was looking at the I other day. Fun. Occasionally what I do is I go, here's a house in my neighborhood that's for sale. 
and it's it's so much money. Why do you do this? So then I go, what's a comparable house in Buffalo? Why do you do? This? And I, you know that we could all be gazillion. You, you and Jesse and I could could live in a in an actual house mm-hmm. with a garage in Buffalo next to each other. Do you realize that? You're the worst Toronto stereotype. It's did you know that the GTA is just ruining everywhere else? Because <laughs> It's too expensive here, so we go everywhere else yes. and we buy it up. Yeah. So you're going to buy up all of Buffalo, and I know you're moving into Nova Scotia too. I, Kingston's unaffordable. Toronto already beat me to Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, over the course of the pandemic, the prices went up like 30 or 40%. Yeah, because I, the neighbors on either side of me moved to the East Coast because they wanted to be as far away from me as possible, but they don't know that I love the East Coast, and I'm coming for them. I love Anyway, uh, your social media needs to represent your brand. Yes. And I don't think the National Predators as an organization, I don't think their brand is we respond to random people and dump on where they're from. Especially poor like, Nolan Bianchi, who's the... just trying to make his way in the sports world. And the Did dude respond, with like the rest of us. And the dude with the password to represent the brand, his idea is, hey, I'm going to dump on random people. Mm. You suck. And I know it's... Nashville rules to live in. I get that. But are we? it's noon right now. And it's, that means it's 11.20 in Nashville. Is there any reason why... I mean, maybe you guys were all partying last night, but there's any reason why nobody's looked at this and gone, hey, we should, that should come down. Yeah. Anyway, um, Jesse, I would like to ask you. I sent you an email. Do you think that you can bring up this one particular tweet? Because this made me very happy. Mm. Um, a tweet that made you happy? A tweet that made me extremely happy. And really, it happened during a game. Careful, can, Jesse's laptop. Can we play the explode. audio, sir, whenever you're ready to go? Oh, because audio, yes. yes. Um, because the audio on this, this is great. It's the best thing. Yeah. Canucks fans, you deserve every good thing that's happening to you. Bruce Boudreau is an A plus human being. He's not a perfect coach. He's a great regular season coach, which is what you need, right? Just get to the playoffs. Yeah. But he's the guy that gets lets the offensive guys go, and the Canucks came roaring out against the Kings during his first game, a four nothing win. And listen to the fan reaction. Unbelievable. Who skates ahead with the puck and lifts it into LA territory. <laughs> Brock Besser to the blue line. Pulling it around for Dickinson. Centering pass and went right past Besser. So later on, during the intermission, they actually played the song. Whoop, there it is. And the whole arena broke out doing it again. Bruce, there it is. That's, that's a happy fan base. Oh, and they were doing it. Uh, I saw videos of them doing it on public transit, too. Like, they were just having a great time. It's weird that they weren't, like, snarling and drinking blood and throwing batteries and all the ways that Canucks fans have been portrayed over the last little while. It's so weird that they react positively to positive things. I, Isn't that weird? It was like I told you. Everybody was like, I, again, this is what drives me freaking crazy about the media. And I'm a media member. Acknowledge that. But, but I saw people going... It's just so unclassy that they would throw a jersey on the ice. What choice did you give them? Eight years. And look at how they react after one game with like, the new coach. I liked uh, CJ and Julian's discussion about that. What'd they the, say? On the most recent I haven't, CJ I haven't show. caught it yet. CJ well, said he doesn't believe in wearing jerseys anymore. Well, that, okay, that but I But he's a reporter, I get on. that. He's no, like, no, not like outside of that. He just thought it, you shouldn't do it. Well, everybody's got bad Because he's an takes. adult. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, no. he's an adult and he doesn't wear jerseys. CJ's one bad take. <laughs> CJ, he's, okay. So I want to have him on and have that debate. We're up to one. Okay. We're up to one. But um, no, he was talking about uh, fans throwing jerseys on the ice. And it's one of the first times I've ever heard a reporter not like completely tut tut it and finger wag. He's basically like, well, look, I mean, I used to really look forward to getting my jerseys when I was a kid. And like, I had the same shitty Gilmore jersey for, I don't know. I had it until like I was 19 years old, yeah. I think was the next time I got a jersey. Um, so. You know, it, it meant a lot to me. So to have a jersey, to have something that means a lot to you, cost over $200, and you're essentially lighting money on fire. It's, I mean, it's maybe not the nicest thing to do. You shouldn't do it during play. You shouldn't endanger anybody. But if it doesn't hit anybody, it's a hell of a statement. You're probably going to get kicked out of the building. But You may get banned for life. You may get banned for life, but that's the statement. Mm-hmm. Good. I don't want to come back. You guys fucking suck. Like that's that's the statement. So he was he wasn't condoning it. He said, but he said he understood it. Like basically, he understood where it came from. Right. Understood yeah. the message. And it's just just absolute frustration. And, and I, I I the thing was what bothered me is that every made everybody made a big deal of that fan doing that, which distracted from the problem of the Canucks have been mired in bullshit for eight years. 
Yeah. That that number one. Number two, when the Bruce There It Is chant happened, it was not covered nearly as much. Those same people were not coming out and going, ah, look at this fan reaction. Mm. And I don't like and the Canucks fans. Canucks fans already have the riots in 2011 thrown at them every day. Yeah. Every yeah. fucking day. And for me, like, I it, that shit drives me crazy. That was a to me. Yes, I understand it's a blight on the city. It's a decade ago. Doubt it happens again. And, you know, I, I just feel like they're unfairly categorized as too aggressive, too passionate, too this, too that. When what I really see is a very healthy NHL market who can let ownership know when they're pissed off. Man, I wish we had a little bit more of that in Toronto sometimes. Mm -hmm. We, we honestly, when we were as bad as it got, like at the end of the notice era, the horror check era, people finally stopped buying tickets. Right. Oh. Oh. But it wasn't as though... Um, it wasn't as though, like, uh, when they were terrible in 2011 that they didn't sell out every game. Because they sold out every game. Mm -hmm. Whereas Vancouver, like, fuck off. We're not coming. Yeah. I love that. That's how you send a message. And that's the fans' way of keeping the team competitive. Good for them. I just yeah. wanted to highlight that. Go I, Vancouver. I, yeah, no, they deserve it. They deserve it. Bruce Boudreaux deserves nothing but good things. <laughs> Did you see Mr. Booth? Yeah, oh, with what? With Spezza? <laughs> with the Spezza. He, he, he. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that earlier. Part of the reason I think Leaf fans were okay with the six-game suspension <laughs> is they thought it was 12 <laughs> because of Mr. Booth. I got three. T I got texts from three different people. Like, 12 games? What the fuck is this? <laughs> because they thought it was real. And then he just tweeted out again, you've been boothed. Like, he's good. He's very good. Good troll. Oh, for us. I almost got it. Oh yeah, yeah. He's been he's booted me before. For, for a second, it. I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> it's very funny. Yeah, he did a great job with it. So very funny. Anyway, it's nice to see Canucks fans happy, I, and it does feel like it does feel like the 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 bad air has been let out there a little bit, and the team feels like okay, we can relax. Like, did you see the JT Miller post game? No. Okay, he just because he seemed he of all of them was the sort of the center point, right? Right. He just seemed like. Yeah, you know, he's asking, you know, everybody's going to be held accountable, but he's like, you know, he asks you to do something and you do it. And if you don't do it, he, he talks to you on the bench about it. I liked uh, that was like, it was just such a great. Yeah, it's very matter of fact. And he seemed happy. I like Boudreaux's quote. I think it was before the game. He's like, yeah, I already had a star player asked to play in the penalty kill. And I said, OK, I will. But if you're bad, I'm not playing you there anymore. Amazing. The, or no, he goes, uh, if you're bad uh, or if it doesn't work, don't ask me ever again. There's <laughs> there's a Rod. I think at uh, Rogers Arena, I believe they were. Yeah, they were at home. Mm -hmm. Rogers Arena had a fire, uh, a fire alarm pulled before the game. That something was triggered yesterday. Uh, yeah. Or no, sorry. The day before during practice uh, oh. or after practice. And Bruce Boudreaux, like, you're supposed to leave the building. Bruce Boudreaux just stayed. And he said to reporters afterwards, he was like, I... I would have had to go down six flights of stairs, and I figured I'd just take my chances. <laughs> I thought that was when I, yeah. he was with Minnesota. No, no, no that, 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 was? that quote wasn't. That was from like a, a couple years ago. Okay, my bad. Yeah, what yeah. does he live in the rafters? I thought that no. was funny. Lives on the photographer. <laughs> Sorry, that was my bad. The... I thought I thought it was in reference to the Canucks. No, no, it's from uh, a few. Years anyway, ago. still, that's fucking hilarious. So yeah. He's a legend. Yeah, yeah. He, no, he's he's, but, he's a legend, and it's so simple. Like, did you did you read the Brock Besser conversation? He's like, oh man, you used to score against us all the time. And you know what you did? You sh you sh you shot. You get back to shooting. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Besser actually said after the game, he was like, uh, he's like, he told me to never pass and always shoot, and he scored. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's literally what he said. <laughs> like, this is this is why Ted Lasso is believable. <laughs> I've like, never uh, seen Ted Lasso. I don't know the premise. I think you'll. It's a it's a football dude, coach gets hired to go to. Not start. gonna watch it's, it. It's yeah. really funny. I don't want Apple Plus. I Whoa. have I have too many streaming services. Wow. wow. And Apple products. You've yeah. you've given more to Apple than anyone in this room. Yeah, yeah, yeah you so have. no more Apple Plus. Tell me about Fair Ted Lasso. Enough. It's Tell very funny. Well, okay, so it's a football <laughs> I said that so I can get some context on what you're about yeah. to say. It's an American football coach who is hired to coach a soccer team uh in Europe. And you're like, How how could this work? Surely it's more complicated than that. And apparently it's not, based on Bruce Boudreaux. <laughs> Any dude in a bar can be like, I want you to shoot it. You have a good shot, so shoot it. <laughs> Go around the room. Who's the fastest player on the team? Uh, me, sir. I want you to skate. Why is I don't know. He's drunk in this. I don't know. I want you to <laughs> skate. 
It sounds like somebody's drunk at the bar trying to order a shot. Yeah. And the bartender's not listening to them because they're too drunk. Order me a shot. It's oh. Yeah, that reminds me. Shoot. I already told you that. All right. Good. Do it again. Shoot twice. I Every think- time you shoot, you shoot twice. I think we underestimate the amount that professional athletes could just do this on their own without a coach. Because, like, we see assistant coaches hop in all the time. And, yep. like, they're they're so good at what they do. Just any athlete who's playing a, a sport at a professional level that if you just give them some parameters and they can hop in and figure yep. it out. Yeah. Yep. You know? Yep. And well, just make sure they're happy and motivate them. That's why when a, a coach sucks, it's so bad. Like if Travis Green was really getting the room down, it really sucks for them because it's so easy for them to just go out and play a sport that they love that they've been playing all their life. So you bring in somebody like Bruce and you probably just... Some hey, guys don't shoot. have that, that lightness to them though, you know? Like, yeah. like think about Torts. Sometimes Torts is really funny, but he's always dark. And sometimes he's really endearing. Like you, you, I think TSN did a special on him where they went to his farm and he was like playing with his dog and, you know, and like, and you're like, man, this, this is a nice man. And a lot of people who've played for him say that, yeah. but me, but remember Columbus had to have an, a, a players only meeting with the coach to say, can you chill? Oh yeah. Like there are certain guys where like I, I give credit to, was it Stan Schmiel or Francisco Aquilini, whoever called Bruce Boudreau up and say, we need a guy who's a little lighter. You know, we need a funny Twitter account <laughs> <laughs> with a little bit of experience, you know, coaching uh, Alex Ovechkin. Let's hire the meme coach. Yeah. Which is, that's Bruce Boudreau. He's the meme coach. And, and, uh, and I listen, Canucks fans are very happy for you, but do not forget Bruce Boudreau is cheering for the Leafs forever and oh, ever. Oh, he's an man. active, literally an active Leaf fan. Yeah. It's great. Just throwing that out there. Like so many in Vancouver. <laughs> active Leaf I hear fan. you have a lot of fans out there, man. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go back. I love it. No, no, for sure. Okay, so um, you know what? We didn't get a chance to do the press conference last time. So I figured maybe this time we do a little bit longer. 45 minutes. That's how long you want the press conference to be? No, I was kidding. (laughs) But you guys, okay, I'm just going to stop making jokes. It's Wednesday and we're done. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Um, Do we want to talk about the... Do we are we announcing the guest we're having next show or is that a surprise? Oh, I'll do it. Someone on Twitter got it already. I think because this person talked about it on their Sirius XM show. Oh, yeah, they talked about that they're coming on. Yeah, they mentioned oh. on their show that they're coming to see us. Yeah, someone tweeted me and I'm like, how the f- how I do know. you know that? We didn't oh. announce it. Yeah, we're gonna have Peter Mansbridge on. Peter Mansbridge, <laughs> by the show. way, is uh, yay. <laughs> Peter Mansbridge is the Walter Cron- Cronkite of Canada. Uh, he's the he would be the best old school uh news anchor we've ever produced as a country and uh is and and is just an og as well he's amazing just a good guy um and brilliant and i believe he has a book to promote yes he absolutely does and i will take full advantage of that and have him on our show so my 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 vacuum's broken and and i've got two dogs and a cat and my girlfriend said to me she's like get the vacuum fixed because peter mansbridge is not walking into an unvacuumed house Oh, I don't. Is your vacuum broken or is your room? My room is broken. Is he coming <laughs> here? I don't. I think, thought he was coming. I don't think so. Oh, he's not coming here. I can send an email and get him. Oh, to, is it just Zoom? I'm pretty sure it's oh, just Zoom. Oh, okay. I was like, I thought he's coming here. I'm like, shit. <laughs> he's coming to my house. Oh, so. ask him. I mean, it'd be pretty cool to have him here, don't you think? I'll ask him. Okay, ask him. Okay, I will. Do you want me to do it right now? No, or? you don't have to. Oh, do it. Okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, I think we can do we can do Discord questions because I think it's I think it's important we do that. All right. The National. I'm Peter Mans. Um, Peter Mans. Speaking of great broadcasters, I think uh, since we're talking about pre- Peter Mans, we should also mention I'm going to do this horribly, and then Steve is going to start to do it uh, very well. Okay. Uh, uh, Brian Williams. Brian Williams. Retired. Yes. So shout out to Brian Williams, who is also in the pantheon of Canadian broadcasters. I have a story about Brian Williams, if you might. Go okay. ahead. Um, I interviewed him uh, when I was a. First year Humber College person. Uh, There's a Canadian Brian Williams and an American. Yeah, Williams. Brian. Not, we're not talking about MSNBC. Yeah. I, I <laughs> lied about going to war, Brian <laughs> yeah. Williams. We're what talking the, about what? one of them's a shit guy <laughs> and the other isn't. Uh, Brian Williams. <laughs> that, yes. War. Hang on. He, I'll, I'll look he up the lied story. about his his trip in. Uh, I believe it was uh, Iraq. Hang on. When he was it up. Com- yeah, tell the story correctly. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Williams has been telling a shifting story over the years about a day he flew abroad 
uh, in a U.S. Army helicopter in 2003 during the invasion of Iraq. It's like- in later versions, he said the helicopter was hit and forced down by enemy fire, the version he told last Friday. Called out for his fabrication, Williams came clean, calling the recollection a mistake and acknowledging that it was a helicopter flying well ahead of his helicopter that got hit. I don't know what screwed up my mind and caused me to uh, conflate one aircraft with another is what he said. Now, for that, he was the anchor of NBC's Evening News. Oh, dear. So he lost his position there, and now I believe he's at MSNBC, and he may have just resigned from that. He's continued his career, but has never been the same. So anyway, we're going to have not that guy. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have a not that guy story. Yeah. Brian Williams in Canada is best known, for me anyway, for his Olympic coverage. He is one of the most passionate, energetic Olympic anchors we've ever seen, and kind and, and incredible in the sense that, you know, when you cover the Olympics, it's two weeks... And you've got to know everything about everyone. You never know who's going to medal. And like when I did the Grammys, and this is my best comparison, the um, the book that they give you to study beforehand is enormous. Like you got to know the background of who's up for World Music Artist of the Year. You know, is it this flautist? Is it this organist? Is it this? You know what I mean? You got to know that. Stuff. It was Esperanza Spalding. Uh, there it is. Yeah. I actually have a funny story. Yeah. About, but pick a harder one next time. Long story short. <laughs> That's the same with the Olympics. You got to know a lot about a lot of people, brand new faces. Even if you're in sports, you've probably never seen this. And Brian's commitment to amateur sport, he was always on like, you know, CBC would have like the Sunday morning swimming, world swimming competitions or Canadian swimming. And Brian would know everything about every person that, that was, was in it. And uh, I got to interview him for a school project while I was at Humber College. The one year I was there before I dropped out. And <laughs> he talked about, um, we were talking about hockey. And we we're talking about hockey parents specifically. That was my piece for Humber News. And he said one of the things that he noticed from young athletes, specifically hockey players, is he's like, the kids that are going to make it are going to make it. And he said, you can't force your kid to be obsessed the way that Wayne Gretzky was obsessed. And he's like, when I talk about obsession, let me tell you. And I, I remember this because I had it on speakerphone on a landline. And I was like, I got closer to it because he's such a great broadcaster. And he's like, Wayne Gretzky. And I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> and he's like Walt Gretzky gets a lot of credit for what Wayne did and he said it's deserved, deservedly so he's like but you tell me a 6 year old that gets up at 5.30am every day before school skates for 2 hours goes to, eats breakfast, goes to school and then comes back and plays hockey for 6 hours a night he's like how many 6 year olds do you know that do that he's like Wayne did that he said that's what it takes that's the obsession and he said you can't force that you cannot force that that is, you're, 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 you're that obsessed or you're not. And he's like, so what I, he's like, my message to hockey parents is just let them fucking play. And he didn't say fucking, but he said, let them play. It would have been great if you did. Oh, it would have been great. He said, yeah. let the kids play and learn team skills and learn interpersonal skills. That's why you put them in, in hockey. You don't put them in hockey so that you one day can, can siphon off some money from their salary as a professional hockey player. And I was like, this guy's amazing. And it's, a, it's, it's sad in recent years because the CBC has taken a far less, um, has been far less at the forefront in terms of their sports coverage because of the Rogers rights buys and everything else. Um, Brian Williams is, to me, uh, one of the best storytellers in this country and one of the most inclusive. He was ahead of his time in terms of the inclusivity. That's what I would say. I love Brian Williams, and I think he's amazing. And 50 years is, he's probably like, okay, I'm done now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd be done in 50 years. He's just, he just had such a gift for, like, not everyone cares about every Olympic event, but he had the ability to make me go, fuck yeah, we're going to win gold in Javelin. Let's yes! Go. Yes! Let's go. Oh, Canada. <laughs> and just douse myself in maple syrup. <laughs> javelin! <laughs> We are the number one javelin country. I don't know. If He'd make you fall in love with the athlete in 30 seconds. Exactly. Yeah. It's amazing. Amazing, amazing talent. Uh, sorry, Jesse, keep going. Uh, I haven't started. All right. <laughs> Get started. So uh, I had my list last Wednesday of the Your Team Is Done Awards. Oh. And uh, Adam was away, so I didn't do them. But I'll save them for the week of Christmas when we have some best of episodes because okay. it'll play perfectly into our 2021 prediction episode that's coming up. The holiday spirit. Your team is done. <laughs> so look out for that over the holidays. First question comes from Arrogant Madam. Arrogant Madam says, Adam, talk about Billy Bishop and how he was a fraud. 
<laughs> Man has an airport named after him in Toronto because he was Canada's air ace. But majority of his takedowns were not confirmed. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what's happening here? So, um, so Billy Bishop, in, in wartime, have you seen Enemy at the Gates with oh, uh, Jude Law? So uh, that's the story of Vasily Zaitsev, who was a... Nikita? A, no, Vasily. <laughs> Might be his great-grandfather. Uh, was, was a member of the Red Army, was a legendary sniper. And, is that based on a true story? Yes, it is. Oh wow! Yeah. So um, now I don't know if all of it's true, but I believe that yeah, the, the, the you know the guy had like 133 confirmed kills. Now Russia is famous for this. Yeah. They had, they they had a guy, believe it or not, in Russian propaganda, that you know one of their things was about being um, as efficient as possible, right? Being a a worker for the state. Mm -hmm. You're doing it for the state. We're all in this together. But here's a great example. Here's a guy. You know, like good old American boy. Here's a good old Russian boy doing it well. So they, fe they picked a guy who looked Russian, ethnically Russian, blonde hair, strapping, young, good looking, whatever. And they, you know, the average coal miner, let's say, can, can pull out three tons of coal a day. They had this guy going, he can pull out 10 tons of coal a day. And at the time, people believed it. It would, you know, show up in Pravda. It would show up on the poster. It'd be like, you know... Just because you're, you're really good doesn't mean you're, you're working really hard doesn't mean you couldn't work harder for Mother Russia, for the Soviet Union. So it's, it's a propaganda story. And the reason you do that is to motivate a population to be the best version of themselves. In war, governments need heroes. They need their Captain America. They need somebody who they can say, look at this person. They're doing great. I mean, in, in Germany, they had in World War I, they had the Red Baron. And who was infamously apparently shot down by a Canadian, but now we actually think he was shot down by ground fire. So that's a whole different story. But Billy Bishop was at the time the guy that Canada got to root for. And it seems odd in retrospect that we're rooting for somebody to kill other people. But that's what war is like. It's something we can't relate to. Right. So when the newspapers are writing stuff back home, and especially later in the war, when air power becomes a major part of operations and Canada specifically had a real problem getting people to sign up because you know when you see 50,000 people died in one day at the Somme you're probably not going to sign up and and in fact Canada I believe instituted conscription at the end of the war just because they were so short on bodies so what's, I say what's conscription conscription is where you're literally forced into military service oh, I, that sounds awful yeah you, it's a lottery and if your name's called you're going that's terrible it's terrible and it was something that they swore they'd never do. The Brits swore they never do. They never did it. Well, they did it in World War I. And they, I think people did it again in World War II. My thing is, Billy Bishop's story is not about Billy Bishop. Billy Bishop was a story to inspire Canadians to be their best. Now, did Billy Bishop profit off of that? <laughs> And were all of his kills confirmed? But, ah, who's there? Who's going to check anyway? Hey, Billy, let's just put a little marker on the side of your, your biplane there. Because they used to, used to put a little marker for every kill, confirmed kill that you had. Right. Uh, let's put a little marker on there. Let's take a picture. Don't worry, it'll take ten, five minutes to render. So you take the picture and you got to stand there frozen. Uh, and, then, and then we'll send it back and the paper's back home. They'll love it. They'll sell tons of one cent papers. Mm. And that's that's... That's literally what Billy Bishop's story is. So, yes, is it fraudulent? Yes, probably. Did he have that many confirmed kills? No, probably not. Um, however, at the time, the war was not going well, and they were trying to inspire Canadians to join up, and you got to create heroes to do that, and to create heroes, sometimes you have to fudge facts. He's a liar! Yes. And why we have an airport named after him, I'm not exactly well, sure. Well, is he a liar or are the government liars? Oh, like a big time liar. They yeah. used him. Yeah. And he just sort of went, okay, I guess I'm yeah. Billy Bishop. Like and Captain, the story of Captain America is literally Billy Bishop, only in the Captain America story, Captain America actually does it. Yeah. Like the fictitious. The fictitious Captain, Captain America. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Also like modified by science. Yeah, that too. Yeah, isn't he an alien? No, no. He just has like a drug. No, Superman. That's yeah, Superman. Yeah. Superhuman. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, that's Billy Bishop. I don't even know how many confirmed kills he was supposed to have had. But I think it's in the 30s or something. Uh, and really, it, it doesn't really matter. Should the guy have statues built in his honor? Probably not. 
Should he have an a airport named after him? Probably not. But they've called it Billy Bishop this long. That's the thing about his history, right? There's the history that occurs right after the event and like 50 years later. And then there's the history that happens when it's not within living memory anymore. And you could take a much more objective view of it. Right. And what you're seeing, especially with World War I research, and you're going to start to see it with World War II research here in the next 20 years, is we're walking, a, we're walking back a lot of the nationalistic tendencies that kind of permeated the way we conceived World War I, the stuff that we would have learned in school. And what we're getting is a lot more of an objective view. The way we would look at, you know, Napoleon, uh, who, you know, to some people is a hero, to some people is an absolute fucking monster. You know, we're, we, and you realize that humans can be both and history can be both and or it can be absolutely stupid like the, <laughs> the Billy Bishop story. <laughs> so anyway, long story short, that's the story there. It's, it's all propaganda. They were trying to get people to sign up. All right. Trivia question. How many lakes are there in Minnesota? Thousand lakes. <laughs> Why do you say that? Isn't there, aren't they land of a thousand lakes or something? I don't know. I don't Isn't that think. a thousand? <laughs> 179. For context, there are 307 million lakes in the world. Um, okay, I'd like to increase my answer. Um, if you would like to change your answers, thank you, yes. 4,000 and... You can't 20, use your computer, Adam. 4,269. <laughs> Adam, how many lakes are there in Minnesota? I'm right. Uh, I thought it was 1,000. Okay, that's your guess. The MNDNR database suggests that Minnesota has 14,380 lakes. I was only off to the power of 14. Well, not it, to the power of, sorry. <laughs> if you count the lakes that cross the U.S.-Canada border and do not count a few lakes that are mostly in other states. Well, Four I don't, so it's 1,000. Yeah. There are 14,000 <laughs> lakes in Minnesota. No wonder they're all good skaters. It's cold, and they have a million lakes. No wonder. Yeah. By the way, in retrospect, isn't it bananas that Minnesota went that long without a hockey team? I was just going to say. <laughs> like, yeah. Stupid. Yeah. It didn't work there, and they're like, well, it will never work. But it did work there. I think they just had, like, the NHL was the Wild West right up until, like, 93. Uh, this question is from Sav Savoy Jedi. Okay. In what order do you put do you put wet no, do you wet your toothbrush and add toothpaste? Uh, they say the correct answer is toothpaste, then water, then brush your teeth. That's how I do it. I do water, then toothpaste, then water. Oh, that's psychotic. Is it? Why do yeah. you do both? I don't know. <laughs> you afraid it won't get wet the second that's time? Crazy. I don't know why. I, I don't have a. <laughs> I never thought that's about a it. Great answer, Steve. <laughs> I don't <laughs> passionately go fuck anyone who does this differently. Jesse, what do you do? I do toothpaste, then water, then brush my teeth. I, okay, so that's you, you. me. Okay, yeah. all right. I think that's oh, the normal way to do it. There are people that do water, toothpaste, yeah. mouth. No, yeah. no, no, no. I do water, toothpaste, water, and then I spike the toothbrush <laughs> into the toilet. I don't and brush my Gronk teeth smash. after. smash. Yeah, I just go. <laughs> and then and Leo's watching. You're like, you soak this in. Yeah. <laughs> Forever. And I, I do nothing but eat garlic and gargle with oil of oregano. <laughs> oh, and my wife loves it. Uh, Steve, that is a very odd way to brush your teeth. I, I guess. I don't know. This question comes from Beach Board. It is a direct response to one of our previous episodes. I believe our episode from last Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are always talking about the internet being mad at you. Here's an instance of a case. So Beach Board said, I joined this Discord because I demand to know the reason for the smear campaign against Catcher in the Rye. I'm an offended English teacher. Oh. So recently, on I'll a, tell you. Uh, I think on Friday's episode, you guys said Catcher in the Rye is garbage. You tell him, Steve. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's far above... It was way far above my head as a, I don't know, like sixth grade student? No, you were in high school. Fifth we didn't grade? We read it in high school. Mm. Really? I'm not sure. Maybe grade nine. Okay. Maybe. Well, and there were a couple books. Like, we read To Kill a Mockingbird twice. Like, in the curriculum. Mm -hmm. We had to read it in grade seven, and then most of us aced it when we had to read it in grade 11 because we already read it. There are other books. 
And I realize this isn't your problem as the English teacher. It's the curriculum. Mm -hmm. There. Why are we reading as curriculum books that are over half a century old? Why can't that be in a category of old ass books? I think because when you're doing English, you want to read English as it's developed. It's like the same reason we do Shakespeare. It's 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 the top of the top of its time. And it's it when you're teaching English, you're teaching why the language be, you know went this way. And and hmm. what people used to, you know, English is history, right? It's yeah. there's a there's a, you know, you're ta you're talking about the most powerful forces in the English language and literature. That's why. That's great, Adam. I'm 12 <laughs> and I don't give a shit. Just well, we gotta make you give a shit at some point. No, no, you're not gonna make a 12 year old care, <laughs> except for like a handful of weird ones. Glances at Discord, apparently, at this English teacher. You're losing, you're making kids hate reading by no. making them read that shit 100%. No, 100%. nobody, that's not an enjoyable read. No, it's not. It's not. And, and listen, I'm, I'm going against Steve, but I also agree with you. I don't think that that's the one we In gotta read. In grade seven, I had to read a book called Flying Geese. And I was like, oof, Maron, the title sucks. Like, the, yeah. the title sucks and you opened it and it got worse. One book it's I read nice. in grade seven that I never forgot was called Waiting for the Rain. And it was about the end of apartheid in South Africa. And it was about a white boy and a black boy. And they grew up together as friends. And then, you know, what those protests took them to on the other side. It was unbelievable. That sounds interesting. I've and never compelling. forgotten. It was a great. Sounds amazing interesting book. and compelling. Yeah, I'm not saying old books are incapable of being good. I'm just saying a lot. That wasn't a, that old though. That wasn't that old. Oh well, there you go. So as a kid who, oh yeah, that's right. It was yeah. As a kid who enjoyed reading and read early, I read really early. I enjoyed reading. But the school system would routinely make me read bullshit that I didn't like. Right. So there's a lot of politics that go into that, too. We won't get into that part. But I will say this. The problem I have with Catcher in the Rye, Jesse, mm -hmm. and, and Mr. English no, teacher. No, yeah, not me. English teacher. Catcher in the Rye <laughs> um, is, you, you, we're, to the same point I made to Steve, we're talking about the best of the best that we have to offer. You got to read the classics at least, or at least hack at them, try. It's not. No, hold on. But that is not one of them. No, it's, that's it's not a great not. example of storytelling, of written word, of sentence structure, of chapter structure. There's nothing about Catcher in the Rye that's special. And no. then at the end of the book, it's like, well, he's not matured anyway. Like the whole thing is about how this immature guy doesn't mature and then treats people like shit. And oh, by the way, he finishes not matured. His, and, his and, life is wasted and so is your time. It's, it's, that's the thing. It's a, it's drudgery. And, and, and I think that, um, uh, it's the same as with the Revenant. I found that whole, the Catcher in the Rye felt like Revenant did to watch. You know what I mean? Just the, uh, Leo DiCaprio and a bear. It's like, oh, this movie is exhausting. So was that book. Mm -hmm. And I think, so you, 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 you do Shakespeare because that was the height of, uh, that changed the world at the time. And that has still has an effect on literature today. Catcher in the Rye I don't think so. A book that I do think that everybody should read, 1984. Yeah. I think that's a yeah. George. Absolutely. Yeah. You'll never stop thinking about that book once you read it. So you I understand didn't, the story and the themes. I didn't have to do Catcher in the Rye because the way our, we had so many kids in our school that like they would split the English books, uh, oh, books for okay. each class. So oh. like one half would read uh, Animal Farm oh. from George Orwell and the other half reads 1984. So then I, I think we did that too. I wasn't on the Catcher in the Ride side. I was on. We I think we did like Tom Sawyer while they were doing Catcher in the oh, Ride. Oh boy! Oh so, my God! Tom yeah, Sawyer. What a train! Yeah, so what a train. I don't. I don't remember. It might. I don't know if it was at that time, but it was like another. They made you read book. Tom Sawyer. Yeah. yeah, sometime in my schooling. Man, so. that was like uh, what was the one um, Harper Lee? Uh, Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah, yeah, that was a great nine read for us. Yeah, yeah which has like a beginning, middle, end, and yeah, themes that I understood as yeah. a student. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I never read. I've never read Catcher in the Riot. It sounds. It's just not a great read. It's just <laughs> it meanders. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's one of those books where you know when uh when you're at uh, somebody's house and and they're like everybody's like the one cool person's like I love this song and everybody's like yeah me too. That's how that book feels. It's like if you, it's like people <laughs> like, will judge you for being yeah. less intelligent if you don't like Catcher in the Rye. Society, like we can stop now. Yeah, or it's like <laughs> the Emperor's New Clothes, right? Where like, yeah. uh, it's like yeah. he's wearing nothing. He's wearing nothing. The Emperor is naked. Oh no, the clothes look great. No, they they look great. Yes, it's it's no. I yeah, hate it. I hate not it. not a fan. Stop. I'm with you. Stop. Give your give kids interesting things to read, and I promise they'll like reading. This question comes from 
Heron Tor. You guys got to get easier uh, Discord names. Yeah. So just for my sake, uh, simplify your names. Heron Tor says, trivia question. Which Leafs have scored the most goals since the move to ACC slash Scotiabank? Well, this was on the broadcast last night, so I actually remember it. Ah. <laughs> I don't know the number of goals. So, Do you want so to take you, a stab? you know the leader? I know the top three. You know the top three. Adam, can you guess? Since the move in 1999 yeah. to Scotiabank, mm -hmm. who leads the Leafs in home goals? Home goal. It's not Matthews? Is that your guess? I mean, it would make sense that it would be Sundin or Matthews, right? I'll say, I'll say Matthews because he had 70 and 80 games. Like, I don't know. It's pretty good. I be if I remember correct, uh -huh. or should you just... No, no, no. Give me what you remember from the top three. Okay, so hopefully this is right. Ma uh, Sundin number one, Matthews Kessel number, number two, Matthews number three. Kessel number two. Kessel Sorry, top three. He hit thirty every year. The, they were bad, but the correct answer is Sundin Matthews Kessel. Oh, okay. that's got to be recent then, because Kessel was man. Going time. Matthews has scored a shitload of goals. Let's do a trivia for the number of goals that Matt Sundin scored since nineteen ninety nine at home in ACC slash Ghost Bank. It's not going to be a high number. 234. That's a lot. That is a lot. Like you're guessing lakes in Minnesota. 147. <laughs> Are you serious? That might even be too high. Adam, what the fuck? It's 147. Hey! Oh. <laughs> how, how did you do that? I, I guessed. I actually thought it was somewhere <laughs> in the 120s. That's how low I thought it was. Because Sundin Wait, scored. what was your guess? 147. He guessed it right on. It's 147. <laughs> I could try that a thousand times. I'd never What get it. just happened? <laughs> we were all here for this moment. Holy this shit. moment will go down in infamacy. <laughs> infamacy? Infamacy. I like making up words. <laughs> You're Adam like Wilde <laughs> nailed the guess of Matt Sundin's goals. It, Matthews is going to pass him in like two minutes. Uh, Sundin's at, or Sundin. Matthews is at 116. So it's going to take a little bit. I am you now. I am you. But I think Matthews pro could... Matthews like goes on a tear. You could pass him by April. Oh, wait. No, this is just home goals? Ooh, yeah. No, yeah, it's going to yeah, take a little bit. Sure. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Damn. Kessel finished with 103. And I don't think he's going to add to that number. That's just at home? Yeah. Man, we gave Phil Kessel shit. Ridiculous. Gave him he nothing. was amazing. Nothing. Man. You want some of the other, uh, some of the other names yeah, on this yeah, list? Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, so it goes Sundin, Matthews, Kessel, Kadri. JVR? No way! Kadri and Darcy Tucker are tied at 82 in fourth spot. Actually? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I didn't realize Kadri had that many home goals since I, 99. I bet I know who's after them. JVR. Okay. JVR? It has to be, yeah. 76. After JVR is Bozak. Wow! Then, then Antropo Bozak and Antropov are tied at 68. Uh, Ponikarovsky, 61. Oh, Nylander, 58. That's surprising. Surprising it's that low, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, because he's 1, 2, Jeez. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, he's at 10. He must score on the road a lot. Uh, Lupul, Marner, Tavares, Roberts, McCabe, Hyman, Kuhleman, uh, Hoagland, okay. Riley, now we're getting depressing. Stajan. <laughs> Stajan, who played like three <laughs> minutes here. Yeah, end of the list. Man. They just got 40 home goals since 99. Man, he was... So I guess he was here longer than I thought, but I was he oh, only he here was. Three, three, four years? He was in Toronto. No. You know what it was? It's because he was the... He was like the the blue chip rookie who's going to save the team, and mm -hmm. then the team was bad. And we're like, he must be bad. And we traded him, and then he was a very good flame for a very long time. 05 to 2011, to me, feels like how the pandemic felt. <laughs> for like least. it's just, never a, bl just a blur yeah. of bullshit. Like, it's just depressing all the time. No, it's very good. You should make 82 videos about them each year for <laughs> over half a decade. Yeah, that's not a happens. test. I don't know what is. I cannot believe I'm still here. Do we have any more? <laughs> we're good. All right, we're call good. call it a show. Okay, so if you, uh, if you want, check out Agent Provocateur because Alan Walsh tells a great story about balls. He actually does. Were we going to do an announcement? Balls. Well, I don't know. Is that going to happen tonight? I thought we were going to do it on the show. Is this we the were going to announce something that's happening. I thought Andrew was going to. No, I thought we were going to. You know gonna... what? 
let's hold off. <laughs> okay. I want it to go on Andrew's show first. I feel like this is something I don't know about. And then we're going to announce it Friday. Okay. Okay. Because okay. you're going to love this. You're going to freaking love this. <laughs> I can't but wait you're right. Either. We probably should have announced it today. But that's okay. We'll do it Friday. Okay. Andrew's going to have a game in between then and then. And I think he should you be the one announces it. you want Andrew to announce it, which is a hint. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what this is. That's okay. Okay. We'll tell you after. <laughs> All right. That's next time on the Steve Dangle Podcast. What do you think it is? Sorry, I just wanted to sit there in silence the whole time and see if I... This is... Okay. Steve. Bye! The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.